Hello, this is Professor Bennett from DigitalAudioTheory.com. This programming example, 10.3.1, we will develop a 3D visualizer for the complex plane. The magnitude and phase response of a filter are great for showing exactly how a digital audio system is behaving on the unit circle. And this is precisely where we need to analyze to see how the system will impact a digital audio signal. However, it could be an interesting visualization to plot the magnitude response on the entire complex plane. While the frequency response is given by the magnitude and phase on the unit circle, the poles and the zeros of a filter usually are at different points off the unit circle. This script allows for such a visualization. To construct a 3D visualization, the entire z-plane must be sampled. We eventually want to have a sampled z, which is expressed as r times e to the j omega. Therefore, we must have a sampled r and a sampled omega. So we're going to use uh, omega from negative pi to pi in 100 steps. And we're going to sample uh, the radius from 0 to 1, 1 being the location of the unit circle, in 30 steps. Then we are going to use this MATLAB script uh, function, an octave function, called mesh grid to return to a 2D grid um, based on the coordinates contained in the vectors r and omega. This gives us a 2D Cartesian grid. Okay. Now we can construct our complex variable z that represents the entire complex plane by taking r times e to the j omega. In this script, three types of filters are provided. The first is a notch filter developed in chapter 9.5.2. The second is a first order low pass filter or high pass filter developed in chapter 9.5.1. And the third is a second order IIR resonator that's described uh, in chapter 10.4. Note that for the FIR filters, the zeros pull the z-plane down, while the poles in the IIR filter push the z-plane up. In all three cases, the magnitude response is going to be the height on the unit circle. And the phase is given by color coding, where rapid change of color indicates rapid cycling of phase. So let's go ahead and select one of these. I have uncommented already the second order FIR notch filter. So let's just stick with that one. Again, these equations are given in the book. So let's first extract the magnitude and phase out of this. So H, normally when we're looking at um, a transfer function, or frequency response, I should say, we're looking just at uh, e to the j2 pi f over fs, right at the edge uh, of the z-plane on the unit circle itself. But here, we're using this grid z, right, zg, which is actually covering the entire complex plane. So this is a truly a transfer function that covers the entire complex plane. So we can pull out its magnitude and angle, no differently than we normally would, using the abs and angle. Now, to actually plot the filters, we need to use the surface plotting function, surf. This function accepts a rectangular grid, so we need to convert the polar form grid to a rectangular form grid using sine and cosine, just like you would with a vector, as we saw in chapter 2. So our x grid is going to then be r times the cosine of the angle versus our y grid is going to be r times the sine of omega. There we go. Now we're going to supply that grid along with the magnitude and angle that we calculated above. And we get a lovely 3D representation of our filter. So this one was a notch filter. So you can see the notch is occurring 
right at this frequency. If we look at the edge, so right at the center of this hump is zero radians, right? DC, just like this. And as we come around this edge right here, we're going higher and higher in frequency all the way up until somewhere around here, which is our Nyquist. So we can see the notch occurring. And then, of course, this zero over here is the conjugate zero that accompanies this to cancel out the imaginary parts. Let's quickly run this through again with a different filter on. Let's do the IIR resonator. So we're going to have a resonance at 5 kilohertz. We see the opposite effect happening. Instead of notches pulling the complex plane down, we get these two big peaks pulling the complex plane up. And again, the outer edge here gives us the magnitude response as we would normally plot it, because that's right on the unit circle. Pretty cool. In the next example, we're going to look at a second order resonator. Until then, thanks for watching.